So we just got back from returning a buck goat that we had borrowed from a neighbor. Uh, and I thought it would be fun to show you how I make butterscotch pudding. Obviously, those two things go together. But anyway, I've had some requests to show this recipe on video because it's a little bit of a tricky recipe in how it comes together. Hopefully I won't screw it up on camera. Should be some good watching. So yes, this recipe is in my cookbook and I will also post it in the notes here on the YouTube video in case you don't have the cookbook. But I still think you should go get the cookbook. It's shameless plug. Pudding is one of those things where I'm always a little bit perplexed as to why boxed pudding became such a cultural standby because it's really not difficult to make pudding from scratch. And I know it feels like I say that a lot, but it's true. So many of these foods that we think we have to buy the packaged or boxed version of are just not complicated. But butterscotch is probably one of my favorites. It's old fashioned, uh, it's a little bit extra special, and you definitely don't need a box to make it happen. First things first. Okay, we're gonna take three cups of milk, add some corn starch, and some salt. Okay, switching over to a saucepan now. I have six tablespoons of butter in there, and I'm gonna add one cup of sugar, and I think we need to pause just a minute to talk about the sugar. Get a ton of questions about this. So I use, for almost all of my baking and all of my cooking, I use a type of sugar called sucanat, which is super weird to spell and pronounce. All it is is kind of a unrefined, ground up, cane sugar. It's really similar to brown sugar. This is my sugar canister and there's just two different brands of sucanat. One's darker and has bigger granules and one is uh, finer and lighter. Same stuff and I use this in place of any recipe that calls for regular brown sugar from the store or sometimes I use it in place of white sugar. It's a great granulated sugar option. We're putting a cup into the saucepan with our butter, by the way. Okay, we're gonna turn this on to medium heat. But I like sucanat better because it's just a slightly less refined type of sugar. It's still sugar. You still shouldn't eat it by the pound, but it's less refined than the brown sugars you get at the grocery store, which technically are just white sugar with a little molasses added in for color. Oop, turning this heat down a little bit. Um, this is the part of the recipe that feels like this is a disaster and you've made the worst mistake of your life. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take this on low heat and we're gonna continue to stir it. And quite frankly, it's gonna look like an absolute mess because this butter is melting slowly and the sugar is not melting at all and it looks like a granulated disaster. I'm trying to find an angle that you can't see the shadow of my head. So we're just gonna keep on stirring. You can see that, that it gets really chunky and granulated and it feels like it's just not gonna work, okay? Keep on swimming, my friend. Trust the process. Yeah, a little scorching over here because I was fiddling with the camera and not paying attention. Don't be like Joe. Okay. When it gets cohesive and shiny and you can see it's just barely starting to bubble, now we're ready for step two. I'm gonna have you take that milk and cornstarch mixture and slowly pour it into the saucepan. All right, so this is the other part of the recipe where you will be certain you have messed it up. The sugar is going to look chunky and you will think it will never dissolve into the milk, but it will, trust me, just keep stirring. So what I'm waiting for is to get this uh, a little bit thickened, a little bit bubbly. While I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna stay super close and stir it frequently, but I'm gonna get some egg yolks ready. I need to separate out six egg yolks. I'm gonna put them back into this Pyrex that had the milk mixture. Like all the chickens have decided to lay all at the same time. So I'm just gonna grab six eggs. I'm moving quickly because I'm kind of away from my stove at the moment and it's making me nervous. If you were holding my whisk, you would feel the difference. Nice and thick, it's nice and smooth. See, I promised you that it would come together. 
I know you doubted me, it's all right, I forgive you. All right, so I went to grab the tripod because I definitely need both hands for this. What we're gonna do now is a really common step in pudding recipes. We're going to temper the eggs, and the reason this is important is that if we put all of our beautiful egg yolks right into this hot pot, we will have instant butterscotch scrambled eggs, which is not the desired outcome. So we have to add the hot pudding mixture into the eggs gradually, and it's a little bit of a process. So here's how that's gonna roll. Okay, here are our eggs. We're just gonna beat them a little bit. This is just the egg yolks, six of them right there. Okay, and now we're gonna take our thickened pudding mixture, and I'm just gonna take about a quarter cup of it and pour it in there and give it a stir. And this is just gonna slowly bring the temperature of those eggs up. Now some recipes will only tell you to do this once with about a quarter cup of the pudding mixture. I do it a couple times, so I figure being a little extra cautious here can't hurt. All right, that may have been slight overkill, but here's our tempered egg mixture. Now we're gonna pour this whole thing right back in that saucepan and bring it to a boil. And once this reaches a boil, we're gonna boil it for one minute at a pretty rapid boil while stirring constantly. Are you done with the snow? Yeah. How yeah. was it? Was it nice out there? Yeah. yeah. Sage, your hair is crazy, girl. Okay, so it's been boiling for a minute. We're almost done. I'm removing it from the heat, and I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of vanilla extract. This looks like swamp water, but this is my homemade vanilla extract. It's a little bit on the light side because it hasn't been steeping a long time. I'm still gonna add it in there. Okay, last step. We need to strain the pudding just in case we had any egg bits. And sometimes even if you are the best egg temperer in the world, you still get some bits of eggs in the finished pudding. So what I'm gonna do is just pour it through this strainer into a bowl and stick it in the fridge and that's it. We did pretty good. You can see there's only a few little bits in there. Honestly, we probably could have skipped the straining step and no one would have known, but it um, doesn't hurt. I'm really excited for you guys to try this though. It's better than any butterscotch pudding I've ever had from a box. And it's so darn easy. Uh, we actually do have a stock trailer, but it's only one goat and it's like two miles down the road. So I have the goat in my car and we're hoping he doesn't pee all over the place. But do you ever have those moments in this homestead thing where you're kind of like, how did we get here? This is one of those moments.